يقتل المسلمون اليهود فيقتلهم المسلمون فيختبئ اليهود وراء الحجر والشجر فينادي الحجر والشجر قائلا يا مسلم يا عبد الله هذا يهودي خلفي تعالى فاقتل إلا الغرقد فإنه من شجر اليهود And you have no idea how much I hope Allah is going to curse you to the rest of your life. You are Ali. Ali. All right, guys. All right. Welcome, everybody. Nice to have you on board. Thank you for watching. Hope oh, I everybody is here. I mean, you just you just saw uh, how lovely. Muslims are and peaceful are towards the Jews and the Christians, atheists, Hindus. This is the true face of Islam, guys. What can we do? I mean, uh, you saw me, my hijab, man. That's his love towards us, man. Uh, hello, uh, Peter, Frauch, Daniel, Hamza Ali. You're a boy. Uh, Hobo Momo, Islam Safari, Abdel Halik, Phil Herrera, Filter Shift, Sega Blind, Jack Semino, Goat Eight Aisha's Quran, Liz, Tenshi Cannon, Andy Shannon. Welcome everybody. If I forgot to mention anyone's name, forgive me. I love you, including the Muslims. Nice to have you with us thank you for your support thank you for joining in. god bless everybody god bless your families wow we have also a guy from brazil hello marcus nice to have you on board grace anyone who just joined in welcome let us start today's live show today's topic is islam in reality and we just played the video for you guys to show the true face of the muslims you know one of the Sahaba said, one of the Sahaba, one of the companions of Muhammad said, we smile in the faces of some people, but in our heart we curse them. Now think about that. Think about what that means. What that meant, guys. Think about what that meant. We smile in some people's faces, but in our heart we curse them. <laughs> so... Today is going to be the truth against Islam. The truth against Islam. That's basically the topic of today. Question. Question. Question, guys. Question. Did Muhammad kill any women or children? Did Muhammad kill any women or or children before we address that question guys let me first ask you to pray with me in the name of our lord and savior so we'll be guided through today's topic pray with me in the name of our lord and savior jesus christ lord dear lord help me not to lean on my own understanding but in everything acknowledge you lord so that you can direct my words, thoughts, and actions. Lord, give us a measure of your strength so that we might not give into discouragement, deception, lies, taqiyya, or any doubt. Please, Lord, help us on you in all our ways. Lord, thank you for your grace. And because of the ultimate sacrifice of your beloved Son, we are saved. Lord, fill me with your Holy Spirit. Please loosen my tongue today so I can speak without any error or any shame, but with truth, Lord. Please give me wisdom and courage to do whatever needs to be done. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. Welcome, everybody. God bless. As we mentioned on this live broadcast, we will have the opportunity today to uncover the true face of Islam, we are going to remove the niqab of Islam today. We are going to remove the niqab of the true face of Islam today. <laughs> uh, 
And last but not least, when I finish my teaching, we will have a nice Q&A session with our guests in the live chat. Hopefully we will have also Muslims, maybe a Muslim Ustaz or maybe an Imam like Zakar Naik. Uh, maybe they will have the courage and the knowledge to call us live today. So let me open up my Skype. We're going to see guys if there are Muslims who might call us today. If there are no Muslims, we will allow a couple of Christians to call us live. I mean, let's us so now and then change um, ways, you know. So I will allow you today uh, to call me, but please don't do it yet, yet. Let us, as a Christian, if you're a Christian and you want to truly call me, keep it um, for the last. Don't call me now. But if you're a Muslim, you can call me now. My Skype ID is the Rob Christian. My Skype ID is the Rob Christian. Maybe the admins can provide my Skype ID in the live chat. So hopefully a Muslim can call me. Let us start. As I mentioned before our prayer, we have a one million dollar question. A one million dollar question for the Muslim audience did Muhammad kill any women or children now the Muslim scholars the Muslim Imams the Muslim Ustaz they will say no <laughs> are you sure yes Abdul did Muhammad kill any women or children no uh, 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 yes no no uh, I mean no is it yes or no Abdul yeah Imam Ya Fadilat al-Shaykh, did Muhammad kill any women or children? No. Speaking from Kif Hira, are you sure? Yes. Is it yes or no? It's no. Uh, Rob Christian, stop, man, you're confusing me. The answer is no. Are you sure? Yes. Okay. You heard the Shaykh? You heard the Shaykh? He said, I am sure Muhammad did not kill any women or children. He did not kill any women and children. To confirm, to confirm this by a Sunni Salafi Sheikh, guys, to confirm it, let me go and see what a Sunni Salafi Sheikh would say about this question. Let us go there. This is IslamQ&A.info, guys. IslamQ&A.info, a Salafi Sunni official website. Right? Let me give you the link. Here's the link. Now read with me. This is the general supervisor so the imam who is issuing fatwas answering questions he says and his name is sheikh muhammad salih al munajid quote unquote he says and i quote only a criminal with a heart harder than a stone which has no mercy does not know allah and does not believe in the hereafter would do such acts. So if you kill any women or children, you are not a believer, you are not a real Muslim, you do not know Allah and you have a heart harder than a stone and you have no mercy in your heart. So it's not even possible for a sane, normal person to believe that such a person is a Muslim. I mean, you just read what Sheikh Muhammad Salah al Munajid, Salafi Sunni PhD Sheikh, what he just said. This is not me speaking, this is him answering questions. Did you catch it, guys? Do you, can you give me one if you caught what the Sheikh just said? He said, only a non-Muslim, a fake Muslim would kill women and children, right? Because the question, if we scroll back, here the question is asked, right? Murdering of women and children. Do you see it? So the Sheikh here under, in, under his fatwa number 2437, this is the fatwa number, and that's his answer to the question. So you caught it, right guys? All right, let us see, let us see if Muhammad is a true, true Muslim. Let us see if Muhammad 
is a sane person. <laughs> Let us see if Muhammad is a criminal, as the Sheikh said. Sheikh Muhammad Saleh al Munajjid. And let us see if Muhammad had a stone heart and if he had no mercy in his heart and if he knew Allah and if he's a true Muslim or not. Let us see. Now let us go to the hadith. Oh boy, oh boy. <laughs> Sahih Muslim. Speaking from Kaif. Hira, Hira. Sahih, Sahih. Muslim, Muslim. This is hadith number 1745a. Sahih Muslim, hadith number 1745a. It's reported on the authority of Saab bin Jatama that the Prophet of Allah, Allah is praying on him, said, when asked about the women and children of the pagans being killed during the night raid, Muhammad said, when he was asked, Muhammad said, do you see it? They are from them. What? Keep doing it. They are from them. So Muhammad said, keep killing. Keep killing the women and children. Keep doing that because they are, anyway, they are from the pagans, right? They are from the pagans. Keep killing it. Let me give you the link. So, so, Muhammad, Muhammad, according to the Sheikh, not me speaking, Muhammad is a criminal. His heart is harder than a stone. Muhammad has no mercy. Muhammad does not know Allah. He is a fake Muslim. And Muhammad does not believe in the hereafter. He only such a criminal like Muhammad would do such acts. It's not even possible for a sane person. It says. So Muhammad is not even sane and he does not believe in Allah and he's not a real Muslim. Bam! Muhammad is a pagan, he is a criminal. Thank you, Shaykh. So, you scholars, you Imams, you are nothing but liars. You are nothing but liars. Because you are actually calling Sahih Muslim a liar. You are Rejecting Sahih Hadith. Yeah, Muhammad is not a real Muslim. According to, to the criteria, right? According to the criteria of the sheikhs. Do you see it? Right, uh, right, yeah, yeah, Khwan. Yeah, Khwan. Right, right? That's right, right? Let's see what uh, what Mimi Hijab would say about it. Nothing, boy. You're finished already. Look at me. Look at me. You know you're done. You are <laughs> Ali. <laughs> Ali. Brainwashing of kids. This is really sad. Man. And you have no idea how much I hope Allah is going to curse you to the rest of your life. You are Ali. Right, right, right. So are you going to do that, uh, Mr. Mimi Hijab? Mr. Mimi Hijab, are you going to spit on your prophet? Because your prophet, we just proved to you that your prophet is not a real Muslim. Are you going to spit and curse your own prophet? Because your own prophet was a fake Muslim. That's the true face of Islam right there. Right? Now, guys. I think we mentioned this earlier in an earlier old live show. Muhammad was poisoned in Khaybar in a Jewish village 
called Khaybar. When Muhammad conquered Khaybar, he was poisoned by a Jewish woman. And till today, guys, till today, when Muslims go on the streets, they say, Khaybar, Khaybar, Ya Yahud, Jaysh Muhammad, Sofa Ya'ud. What? What does that mean? That means, Khaybar, Khaybar, O oh Jews, they are remembering the Jews of how they poisoned their prophet, they killed their prophet. So Khaybar, Khaybar, O oh Jews, the army of Muhammad will come back. <laughs> You know, this is why they want to kill all the Jews. They want to kill all the Jews and even the stones will speak and say, there is a Jew behind me, come and kill him. Else the last hour will not be established. That means the judgment day will not be established until you kill all the Jews. You get rid of all the Jews, right? Uh, right, right, yeah, Juan. Right, yeah, Muslimin. Are you going to be uh, better than the, the Nazis? I mean, the Nazis failed. The Nazis, they failed to annihilate all the Jews. So you are going to be much better Nazis. You're going to kill all the Jews, right? Else the last hour will not be established. Thank you for your donations, guys. God bless you. Thank you for your support. God bless you and your families. Right, uh, Muslims? And I mean, why? Oh, oof, oof, oof. Why? Why not the army of Allah? Why is it the army of Muhammad? I mean, didn't you Muslims always claim that Muhammad is only a warner? So, you know, we are, we know, we know, we, we know that you are worshippers of Muhammad. This is why we call you Muhammadan. You are Muhammadan. You are not a real Muslim. You are a Muhammadan. You are worshippers of this man. That's what you are, Muslims. Now, if you go to the Quran, guys, we go to the Quran, to chapter 47, Surah Muhammad, Ayah 4, it says, Now when you meet those who disbelieve, smite their necks until when you have slain them greatly, then make fast the bonds. Then thereafter let them off either freely or by ransom. Until the world lay down the burdens thereof that she shall do. And had Allah willed, he would have vindicated himself against them. But he ordained fighting in order that he may prove you one by the other. <laughs> and those who are slain in the way of Allah, he shall not send their works astray. Smite their necks. Wow! Smite their necks. Ransom. This is truly a mafia cult, man. Ransom? Ransom? <laughs> this reminds me, guys, of what happened to Kinana, right? They tortured Kinana. Guys, they tortured... Yesterday, we mentioned that. They tortured Kinana, right? They tortured Kinana, the young, the young husband of Sophia that they later took as sex slave. They tortured him. They put fire on his chest. Muhammad himself did that. He put fire on his chest. They burned his chest to show them where he was keeping the treasure, the money, the wealth. They tortured him. Is this a man of God, Muslims? You, you, are, you are a man of God. You are a prophet of God when you are torturing people for money. For money. You are torturing people. You call yourself a prophet. <laughs> you are followers of such a mafia leader. Look, look, look at the Muslims, guys. This Muslim, Abdul, it's, he's not convinced. All the truth that we are speaking of today. And he's still not convinced. You must be truly an evil man because you are following such an evil man. A torturer, a murderer, a killer of women and children. That's what you are following, Muslims. And we proved it today. Right? So they tortured the man. They tortured Kinana. They killed him. And then they 
took his wife as sex slave. Safiya and Muhammad was trading her for seven slaves. I kid you not. He traded Safiya after he tortured her husband, her young husband. He killed him. He, then he traded her with Dahya al Kalbi, you know, because Dahya al Kalbi wanted her as sex slave. And Muhammad traded her for seven black slaves. So Muhammad is a killer of women and children. He is a torturer. He is a murderer. He is a warlord. And he is a slave owner. Buyer and owner. What's left, man? What's left? Muslims. I mean, what's left? I mean, this is the example, uh, the best of example that was created. You follow uh, this? This is the example. <laughs> I'm funny. Yeah. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you for telling me that I'm funny. It's, you know, you, you know what you are. It's it's 702. You know what you are? You remind me of a smart person who said some people just want to see this world burning. That's what you are. That's a great example of someone like you. Some people truly want to see this world in fire. And you must be as evil as your prophet to follow such an evil self-proclaimed prophet, a warlord, a killer. <sighs> if we go to chapter 9, guys, Surat at Tawbah, the chapter of the sword, the chapter of fighting. I still have the translation from yesterday when I was spanking this Abdul. I don't need that kind of stuff. Only fake wannabe Arabs like Amin needs to use that. So let me switch back to Sahih International. It says, fight them, Allah will punish them by your hands and he will disgrace them. What? Allah will punish the unbelievers by the hands of Muslims. And he will, not only that, he will disgrace them and give you victory over them, over the unbelievers. And not only that, he will satisfy the breast of the believing people. So if you have a cure, uh, disease in your breast, the cure will be the disgrace of the unbelievers, punishing the unbelievers. I mean, Allah, you are truly a magnificent doctor. You are truly a magnificent doctor. So the cure and the breast of the believers, of the Muslims, is disgracing unbelievers and punishing them through the hands of Muslims. Right? Wow, man. This is the best. Guys, Allah is the number one doctor of the world. I kid you not. This is chapter 9, ayah 14, guys. Right? Let me give you the link. Guys, Take notes, bookmark our teaching, bookmark the links. And if we go to another chapter, guys, chapter 9, ayah 111, it says there's nothing called all, uh, God, it's Allah, right? So this is a false translation. Anyway, let it go. Allah has brought, has bought from the believers, from the Muslims, their selves, their souls basically and their positions against the gift of paradise so allah already bought you for himself so they fight so you will if you die so if you're going to fight he's commanding you to fight and if you die if they kill you or you you kill them you kill the unbelievers or you get killed don't worry be happy because allah already bought you Allah is a businessman, man. Allah is the best businessman. 
Don't worry, be happy. So if you die, don't worry, be happy. Allah already bought you because he's the number one businessman. <laughs> wow. 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 Guys, I had a conversation with a couple of Abduls on Twitter. That was yesterday, 7 December. Do you see it? I said, and I challenged some Muslims on Twitter, and I asked them, quote unquote, can you show me a complete 7th century Othmanic Mus'haf Quran manuscript? Can you show me a complete 7th 7th century Othmanic Quranic manuscript that has any pause symbols, Tashkil or Tanqid. Please help me. I cannot find anyone, any manuscript from the 7th century that is complete. I have looked at Sana'a, top copy manuscript, Samarkand manuscript, and none of those manuscripts are complete or Othmanic. Maybe you can help me. Look at the reply. The Quran is called the Quran for a reason. And you speak Arabic? Look at the amazing answer, guys. I talk about apples. Abduls are so smart. They talk about bananas. This is your answer, Muslim. Mr. Med, if I know you're watching. I know, because yesterday you were watching too. Is this your answer, Mr. Med? Med saw. Is this your answer to my question? <laughs> you potato. Potato, potato, potato. Potato, potato, potato. So then I, you know, then I answered it. Listen, Abdul. The Quran is an Aramaic word stolen by your prophet and I deliberately wrote it like this from the Aramaic word because remember guys Aramaic is the mother language of all languages in the Middle East yes you heard it Abraham spoke Aramaic Abraham was a Assyrian he was a Assyrian and he spoke Aramaic right he came from Ur. Remember Ur? As mentioned in the Old Testament, in the book of Genesis. He spoke Aramaic. And you got the word Quran. The word Quran comes from the Aramaic word Quriana, i.e. Quriana. Tfaulus Shlihu. Guys, I speak Aramaic. When we say Quriana Tfaulus Shlihu, that means. The speech of the Apostle Paul. We still use these sentences, guys. We still use these sentences in Aramaic. You see how Muhammad borrowed even the word Quran? He borrowed it from the Aramaic speaking Christians. So the Quran was never an Arabic word. It's not an Arabic word. It's an Aramaic word. So you have stolen from the Aramaic speaking Christians. Your prophet was a good copy machine. Bam! What? Bam! In your face, Muslims. Don't forget to swallow it. But also don't forget to digest it. And only the truth can set you free. Look at this other donkey is going to reply. Look, look at this one. Muhammad Shakur. Tupac Shakur. Muhammad Shakur. Yeah, okay. Tupac. Tupac. Tupac Shakur. Uh, listen, Nimwit. So he's going to insult me, guys. He's now insulting me. Listen, Nimwit. Arabic and Aramaic are sister languages. Oof, oof, oof. Aramaic and Arabic are sister languages. When did that happen? When did that happen? Guys, you heard Abdul, right? Suddenly, 
Aramaic, which is the modern language of all the languages in the Middle East, became a sister language of Arabic. Look at the knowledge of this Abdul Potato. Potato, you're a potato, Abdul. Mr. Muhammad Shakur, you're a potato, right? The word qara means to, write, to read or recite. Iqra, qara, right? In Arabic, not speech of Paul. Look at this, look at this guy. Look, look, look at this guy, guys. Guys, I'm giving him an example. Qur'anat falls shlihu. And he, because, you know, these people, right? When they wake up, they, immediately they start smoke hashish. Abdul, lay down the pipe. Lay down the pipe. Stop smoking hashish. I did not say Koreana means the speech of Paul. I gave you an example, Abdul. I said, i.e., example, Koreana at Faulus Shliho. That means the speech of the Apostle Paul. Lay down the pipe, Muhammad Shakur. I know Tupac Shakur used to smoke hashish. So, you know, you remind me of him. <laughs> then my final answer, guys. Look at my final answer. You are a tra true potato. You are a true potato. Potato, potato, potato. Potato, potato, potato. I love that song, man. The potato song. So Aramaic, that's me speaking here. Aramaic is the mother of all languages in the Middle East. Koreana or Koreano depends on the dialect, right? Depends on the dialect. If you are a Western speaking Aramaic, so a Western Aramaic speaker, or if you are a Eastern Aramaic speaker, it will sound differently, but it's still the same word. Do you see it? Koreana or Koreano is an Aramaic word. And your Quran comes from that word. Here is a bone for you. Woof. Abdul. Potato, 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 potato. Guys, we have Brother Hayden. Welcome, Brother Hayden. In the live chat. Brother Hayden is a, a Syrian like me. Brother Hayden, can you give me a one to confirm what I just said? Nice to have you, brother. God bless you. Let him chew on it, says. So you are confirming, right? Let him chew on the bone. <laughs> Man, you're killing me, bro. You're killing me, bro. You see the many ones that he just gave me? Thank you, Hayden, brother. Thank you for confirming that Koreana or Koreono is an Aramaic word. And that's where Muhammad stole the word Quran from. Muhammad was nothing but a copy machine, man. Glad to be here. Well, I am blessed for you being here, bro. Guys, please. To tell you about Brother Hayden. Brother Hayden is an, another amazing debater. And he's a brother in Christ. An Assyrian like me. Like Sam Shamoun who used to stay on the platform called Paul Talk. That's where Christian Prince used to stay. That's why I used to stay. All the old school debaters like us used to hang out there. This is why we sound the same. This is why we sound the same. This is why we have similar style. That's why old school debaters like us or teachers, that's why we have the same style. This is why we are such passionate people. This is why I'm so passionate. Because if you have lived like a Christian like me in the Middle East, I am from the Middle East. You would understand why we are like this. Why we use this style. Because we really suffered under the Muslim persecution of Christians. Persecution of Christian. They did not even allow us to even have important jobs like working in a government. Because, you know, 
that's the true face of Islam. Right? We have also Sister Lydia. Lydia, another amazing sister in Christ who comes from the platform. Paul Talk. Paul Talk, where Zachariah and Botrus used to stay, where Christian Prince used to hang around. Right? So, it is what it is, guys. Muslims have no knowledge. They have no knowledge about anything when it's, you know, outside the Quran. They have only the Quran and they think that's it. They don't care about studying. They have no clue about where the words come from, where Samad comes from, where Ahad comes from. They are all in Aramaic and Hebrew words that Muhammad stole. Muhammad stole all of them and put it in the Quran. Right? Muhammad was a nice copy machine. Guys, let me give you a demonstration. Let me give you a demonstration. The Aramaic language, guys, dates from around 900 BC and even much earlier. Much earlier than this, actually. You know? So this is a wild guess. Right? Do you see it? We have number of modern speakers are 450,000 still Aramaic speaking like me, like uh, Brother Hayden, like Sam Shamon. And the number is even bigger today. I don't know how old this document is, but here you see the Aramaic language here that you see here. Do you see it? So we are still, it's not an died out language. No, we have many people speaking the Aramaic language all over the world. But because we suffered from persecution under the Islam, under the Muslims, we are spread all over the world. We have Aramaic speaking people in Canada, like Brother Hayden. We have Aramaic speaking people like Sam Shamon in America. I don't want to say where I'm from, you know, I'll keep it a secret, right? That's a secret, right? So yeah. But what about the Arabic? You know, since the Abdul, you, you, you saw what the Abdul said on Twitter. Sister. Arabic is the sister language of Aramaic. You liar. Look at the Arabic. Look how young Arabic language is. This is 328 AD. 328 AD. Look how old the Aramaic is. You cannot even compare it. So the Aramaic, guys, is the mother of ma all mothers. The mother of all languages in the Middle East. Remember when we said, mentioned Abraham? Abraham spoke Aramaic. You see it? So Arabic is very young, a very young language, man, compared to the Aramaic. To, to the Aramaic, sorry. You see? Arabic, it says Arabic can be traced all the way back to the early 300s. So it's, it's a very young, it's a very young language compared to the Aramaic. Do you see it? So Muslims, you are truly potatoes when you claim that Arabic is the sister language of the Aramaic. <laughs> Thank you for, uh, for the donations, guys. God bless you. Someone is saying in the super chat, uh, thank you for the donation. The lovely Manta Race 2 says, I believe that it was an evil spirit that disguised himself as an angel that visited Muhammad in the cave. Because why would an angel be scared of a dog? Even though I'm not a Christian, please read. Yes, you are correct, uh, the lovely Manta Ray 2. You are correct. Because don't forget, Angels, guys, angels, when they visited people, they always said, Salam, we come in peace, right? Shlomo, in the Aramaic, Shlomo or Shlama, depends on the dialect, the Aramaic dialect. Shlomo or Shlama, did Muhammad receive peace from the so-called angel, Jibril? No, Jibril immediately started to squeeze Muhammad, like a grape. 
Iqra, Iqra. That was in Cave Hira. Speaking from Cave Hira, Hira. The demon, demon, demon. Jibreel started to squeeze Muhammad. Iqra, Iqra. Keep squeezing him, man. Maybe he will, a juice, maybe some juice or sauce will come out of the Prophet of Islam. So you are correct. Uh, and thank you for your donation. Right? Do we have any Muslim? I mean, my Skype is open, man. Call me. My Skype ID is the Rob Christian. Do we have any Muslim? We don't have any Muslim. We have seven dislikes, man. Yeah, and, and exactly, Brother Hayden. Brother Hayden says, and I quote, Muhammad was too stupid to ask Jibreel, what do you want me to read? Yes, because he said, Ma'ana biqari. I cannot read because there's nothing to read from, right? And in our earlier live shows, guys, we explained to you that according to chapter 7, Ayah 157, and chapter 2, Ayah... If I'm not mistaken, 78, 79, we can clearly make the conclusion that Muhammad could actually read and write. Muhammad could read and write. And we can confirm this also from Sahih Bukhari Hadith, where Muhammad is asking for a pen and paper to write something down for the Muslims, so they will not go astray. So Muhammad could write and read very well. So Muhammad asked the demon who was squeezing him, what do you want me to read? There's nothing to read from, right? So if, if it was a donkey, if Muhammad was a donkey, and I'm not trying to insult any donkey, and if Allah was real, he would have made the donkey, i.e. Muhammad, read. Why do you need to squeeze the poor man three times? I mean, if you have the power, you would have made him read, right? Think with me here. Uh, Hayden, <laughs> he was taking care of Khadija's business. RC, can we debate in Javanese language? No, we can't. Do we have any Muslim who has the courage and the knowledge to call us live? We are live. Call us. My Skype ID is the Rob Christian. If you think, if you think you have the courage and the knowledge to call me, we are live. This is my Skype ID, the Arab Christian. Call me. Yalla ya akhwan, farjuna ardak tafak. Yalla, farjini ardak tafak ya Muslim. Farjini ardak tafak. Yalla ya akhwan. Right? So guys, this is the true face of Islam. The true face of Islam. That's the topic of today. Let me continue, guys. If we go to chapter 2, guys, if we go to chapter 2, Ayah 256, it says there is no compulsion in religion. What? There is no compulsion in religion. How many times have you heard Muslims use this ayah in their debates with you? To the audience, how many times? Did you hear Muslims use this excuse in their debates with you? You know, Islam is beautiful. Islam means peace, right? Any Abdul? Is there any Abdul who wants to call me? We have a topic, man. Our admin uh, first class. Welcome uh, on board, brother. Nice to have you. God bless you. Guys, please keep our brothers... The admins, sisters, keep them in your prayers. Keep me in your prayers. Our brother, admin, he says, always. Well, always, that's true. They always use this ayah. This is one of the most used ayahs today. To deceive Christians and Jews and atheists here in the West. 
Well, nice to have you here, brother. It's a blessing. So, to understand the deception, the taqiyya 101, let me explain to you how this ayah cannot be used anymore by Muslims. Here's the proof, guys. Here is the proof. This is chapter 2. Do you see it? Chapter 2. Same chapter. Same ayah. 256. Do you see it? So we are going to go to the tafsir to explain the abrogation of this ayah. This is Asbab al nuzul The reason why it came down by Al-Wahidi in his tafsir for the Quran ayah. You see it? Let me scroll down. It's talking about there is no compulsion in religion. Do you see it? Then if we continue all the way to the bottom and we go to page 2. Do you see it? You click on page 2. Then the secret will appear. The same, right? You see it? We're still on the same tafsir of the ayah. It says, read with me guys. This was, guys are you with me? Pay attention how this ayah has been abrogated. This was before the messenger of Allah. Allah is praying on him. There's nothing called blessing. Allah is praying on him. Was commanded to find the people of the book. Who are the people of the book, guys? Those are the Jews and the Christians, right? Muslims. So Muhammad was commanded. Muhammad was commanded by Allah to fight us. But then Allah, look guys. But then Allah is saying, there is no compulsion in religion. Was what? Was what? Was abrogated. So the, there is no compulsion in religion. Was abrogated. By what? what? By what is it abrogated, guys? Let us continue to understand what abrogated. There is no compulsion in religion. And the Prophet was commanded the, to find the people of the book. In where? In Surah Repentance. Did you catch it? So this ayah, guys. This ayah in her entirety, right? This entire ayah that you see here, we can put a big cross on it. Because it has been abrogated by chapter 9. Surah repentance, right? At toba means repentance. Let me prove it to you. Do you see it? This chapter, this entire chapter abrogated this ayah. Did you catch it? So Surah al Repentance, Surah al Tawbah, Surah of another nicknames are Fighting, Surah of Fighting, Surah of the Sword. We scroll down. This, I, we believe, we Christians, when we did some digging, we believe that ayahs like these abrogated this ayah because it says it's from Surah al Tawbah, right? So if we. Read chapter 9, ayah 73. It says, O Prophet, so O Muhammad, strive against the disbelievers and the hypocrites. Be harsh with them. Their ultimate abode is hell and hapless journey's end. You see it? So chapter 9 in her entirety abrogated, abolished, canceled this ayah. Yes, it's, this ayah is still in the Quran as you see. But Muslims cannot use it. You Muslims cannot use it. So why are you such munafiq? Why are you such munafiqun Muslims? Why are you such hypocrites? And why are you still, are you still using this ayah with us? Huh? Why are you such scumbags Muslims? Why are you such deceivers? Well, you have to be the deceivers because you are a follower, you are a worshipper of Allah, the deceiver, the number one deceiver. Allah is the best of all deceivers, right Muslims? Allahu khayru makari, right? Allah is the best of all deceivers. Do we have any Muslim? Thank you for your support, thank you for your donations guys, God bless you. There is compulsion of Allah. If Allah sending disbelievers to hell. <laughs> exactly. That's a good one. Oh, Makarina. Yeah, Makar. Oh, Makarina. Ah, uh, hi. <clears throat> right.
You're a Muslim. Well, call me then. Don't be a coward. Call me. Or are you going to tell me that Allah didn't give you a microphone? Well, my friend, let me tell you something. Let me tell you a little secret. We are almost in Christmas. There, Christmas is almost there. You have a couple days left. You can send your request to Santa Claus. And I'm sure if you're a good boy, he will give you a microphone. All right? If you're a good Muslim boy, Allah, sorry, I mean Santa, <laughs> Santa will give you a microphone. Uh, yeah, these, look at these silly excuses, man. Are you telling me that you don't own a smartphone in 2019, almost 2020? You don't have a smartphone and your smartphone does not have a microphone built in. You can download Skype on your smartphone, man. Why are you such a liar, man? Download it. You're, you're not going to tell me that uh, you don't own a smartphone. I know a lot of people who, who even have two or three smartphones in their pockets. Yes. One for private, privacy or private uh, stuff and the other one maybe for business. So don't come with your excuse. I don't have a mic. Right? You Muslims, you know. Maybe you need to do ablution. Maybe uh, Satan farted in your mic, right? Or uh, he peed in your mic. What a disgusting excuse, man. I don't have a mic in 2019. Uh, guys, I, got, I received a message under the comment section in one of my videos. And I needed to translate it because I had no clue what was saying so I put it in Google Translate as you see here we went to Prophet Google peace be upon him to ask him to translate the message so I put this and I put it in Google Translate and it turned out to be the D Dutch language from the Netherlands so this is a lady I believe <clears throat> she's a grandmother and she uh, sent me this message let me read the English for you. RC, Rob Christian, quote unquote, I am a little annoyed by you. Why? You're annoyed by me? Okay. You do not listen to what the callers have to say to you. Really? When did that happen? I have a nice headset. I mean, it's very cheap. It's not very, uh, it's, you know, it's not very expensive like the equipment that Mimi Hijab was using. Remember in the debate of, with Christian Prince guys? Only his microphone, they had two microphones. Each microphone was $400. I mean, I have a microphone that is only $5. It's might be even older than your grand uh, grandchildren, Mr. Grandma. Uh, sorry, Mrs. Grandma. So, and I have a cheap headset. I always make sure to put my headset on to listen carefully to what Muslims have to say. And then she said, especially the last caller, a very serious man who wants to help think along to solve Islam problem. I think she's talking about the, the ex-Muslim who became a Christian who called me yesterday. Well, we allowed him to call us. I mean, I mean, show me one live show, guys. Show me one live show that allows Christians to call live, right? Or let alone Muslims, like us, like Christian Prince. Show me any live show on YouTube that allows that. And yes, we do listen carefully to what people say. So I think you have some hearing issues. Sorry to, uh, I'm not trying to insult you. But you really need to listen carefully more. So, so she says, that was a very serious man who wants to help think along to solve the Islam problem. Yes, Islam, I have to agree with you, Islam is a huge problem because it kills brain cells. It's a disease. I have the impression that you do not want him to steal your show. Really? <laughs> wow. All right. You like to listen to your own voice. No, actually, I hate my own voice. I don't like to listen to my voice because, you know, my voice is so ugly, guys. I kid you not. 
I don't dare to sing at my house because all the mirrors will break in my house. That's how ugly my voice is. So no, I hate my voice. Still, we desperately need people like you. Okay, that's nice. But please change your style and don't try to imitate Christian Prince and add something aggressive. Well, as we mentioned in the beginning of our live show today, I'm an Assyrian, all right? I am an old debater, old school debater. And Christian Prince, Brother Hayden, Lady Anello that you see here in the live chat. We are all aggressive. Don't think, guys, please listen carefully. Don't think that only Christian Prince is, has that style. We all share that same style. And especially because I'm an, also an Arabic speaking native Christian, right? I'm an, I'm an Arabic native speaker. Actually, most of the Arabic speaking Christians, the debaters, if you go to Paul Talk, there's a huge section in the Arabic section of Paul Talk that still exists today. If you download Paul Talk, you can go to very huge rooms owned by Christians who speak Arabic alone, only Arabic, right? And they have the same style like me, like Christian Prince. So I think you have no clue who we are. You have no clue what we are, what we do, or what we used to do back in the old days. So don't come and tell me what to do. You don't like our style. No one is forcing you to watch our shows. Right, guys? No one is forcing the sword of Muhammad <laughs> on your necks, people, to watch my shows. Guys, I'm not doing this for myself. How many times do I read to repeat myself? You don't know, you don't need me. No, you do not need me. You only need Jesus. Right? You don't need me. You only need Jesus. I need Jesus. I am replaceable, guys. But if it's the plan of God, our holy living God, to send teachers like me to teach you, so be it. But I am replaceable. All right? I need Jesus. I'm a sinner like you. We only need Jesus. No one. You don't need me. All right? But please change your style. Well, I can't. You are basically asking to change myself. I'm not going to change myself to anybody. I am not here to please anyone's ears. I am not here to please anyone's ears. Did you catch it? You don't like my style? No one forces you to watch my videos. And then she continues, it's hard enough to make the world listen to you. It's hard enough. Yeah, okay, no one forces you to watch my show, sister. You really have something to say, but you scare your audience away with your self-esteem. Right, okay. Like I said, you don't like it? You don't watch. Then she says, greetings, a grandmother. You see, I think you really need to work about your uh, knowledge because you don't need people like me. You don't need anyone like Sam Shamoun. You don't need anyone like David Wood. You need Jesus. But if it's the plan of Jesus to send teachers like us, so be it. Then we will teach. And nobody will tell me how to teach. You don't like it? Don't watch. Right, guys? Right? And sister, let me give you... Let me give you an advice. Let me give you an advice. Because we are teaching against Islam, because we are debating Muslims, we cannot... We cannot go easy we cannot go easy on them because when you go easy on a muslim like let's say mimi hijab or ali dawa you already lost the debate you cannot allow them to change the topic because when you ask a muslim a question guys 
pay attention. If you ask a Muslim a question, you have to make sure that he answers the question. Because you know, Muslims of today are actually like monkeys jumping from topic to topic, from a branch to a branch. So when you are going to allow them, as you want me to allow them, to change topic every second, you will, know, you will not go anywhere. So it's going to be a waste of time. So please don't, don't force me to change my style because that's not going to happen. I'm not here to please anyone's ears. Make sure that you heard it. You don't like it? Don't watch. Right? I'm not going to be a political correct for anybody. This is me. Deal with it. Guys, <clears throat> let me continue my teaching. Don't waste my time, people. Don't waste my time and tell me what to do. So, I went to this website again. I like to go to this website to destroy the man-made cult of Muhammad, the created man-made cult of Muhammad. And I wanted to learn, I wanted to learn about slavery, guys. I wanted to learn about slavery. And as you see again, this is Sheikh Muhammad Salih al munajjid answering answers, uh, questions in his fatwa. He's issuing fatwa. This is the fatwa number 94840. He's going to answer this question asked by a Muslim. I often hear Christian missionaries like Christian Prince, like Rob Christian, criticizing Islam. That's true. We do. And accusing it because Islam permitted slavery and saying that this is a transgression against man's freedom. That's true. And rights. That's also true. How can we respond to these people? So guys, this Abdul here is asking his Sheikh to teach him how to respond to people like Rob Christian. <laughs> well, here's the answer of the Sheikh. He gives a big speech. I don't, you know, give, don't give him speech, man. Answer him directly. So to finally get the answer, I had to, to scroll down all the way down. You see it from here. I finally found the answer here. So the Sheikh, guys, this Sheikh says, slavery, this one, this is one, slavery is one of the basic principles of Islam. Slavery is one of the basic principles of Islam. Are you with me, guys? I hope I'm not putting you asleep, guys. So slavery is one of the basic principles of Islam. When the question is asked, why does Islam permit slavery? The Sheikh says, this Sheikh is talking, right? Quote unquote, we reply empathetically and without any shame. <laughs> Look at the answer, guys. Look at the answer of the Sheikh. That slavery without any shame that slavery is permitted in Islam. Do you see it? Without any shame, we reply that slavery is allowed in Islam. Thank you, Sheikh. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Thank you for confirming it. But we should examine the matter with fairness, with the aim of seeking the truth. So you see, guys, slavery, slavery is okay in Islam. St they still allow slavery to happen in the world. Go to Saudi Arabia. Go to Qatar. Go to the Middle East. And you will find slavery in the Middle East. In the Arabic Middle East. The Arab world. They still have slaves. They still own slaves. They even take the passports of the foreign slaves that they own so that the slaves the poor slaves cannot run they even take their passports from them can you imagine so they are owning those people 
till today. Go, go on YouTube, man. Those poor people even commit suicide because, you know, they are hopeless. They jump from, from the windows, from high buildings, because they are tired of being slaves. Do we have any black Muslim with us here? Do we have any black Muslim? Please give me one if you're a black Muslim. Don't fear me. Give me one in the live chat if you are a black Muslim. Come on. I know you are watching Muslims. I know, I know, I know. Give me one if you are a black Muslim. I mean, come on, we, are, we have 256 people watching now. But are you a Muslim, Rindali Kazi? I, I'm sure you're not a Muslim. I need a one from a black Muslim. Come on, don't, you know, don't be afraid. Don't be afraid. Mimi Hijab gives me I love your nickname, Mimi Hijab. I love it. So we have only black Christians who are not ashamed to say I'm a black Christian, but we don't have a black Muslim who can give me a one? Man. What a shame. I know you are watching. I know. But you are too ashamed to give me a one because you will know what will happen next, right? You will know what will happen next. <laughs> Look at these scared people, man. Look at these scared people. Look at these scared in individuals. Because the moment they raise their hand and give me a one, we're going to spank th their fake prophet. You black Muslims, you should be really ashamed. And here is why. You should be really ashamed of following a slave master a slave owner of black slaves like Muhammad, the prophet of Islam. Let me prove it to you. We will go th uh, through some hadith, guys, to prove that Muhammad is a slave owner of black slave. He is a slave trader, buyer and seller. This is Sunan Ibn Majah. Sunan Ibn Majah. Sunan Ibn Majah from the authentic six book of six, uh, sorry, collection of six uh, uh, authentic book collections, right? So Sunan Ibn Majah, volume three, book 12, hadith number 2272. Let me give you the link. That's the link. Let me go back, scroll up. It says, it was narrated from Anas that the Prophet, Allah is praying on him. To who Allah prays, we don't, still don't know. We don't get the answer from the Muslims. The Prophet, remember when we mentioned Safiya, guys? The poor young bride who Muhammad tortured her husband, Kinana. He tortured her husband and he put fire on his chest to get the booty, to get the treasure. So Muhammad the torturer, Muhammad the killer of women and children and men, he bought Safiya. So you see, he was a seller and buyer of slaves. She was the sex slave of Dahya. So he bought her for seven slaves, black slaves. Sahih. Seven black slaves. From Dahya Kalbi. Do you see it? Yeah, guys, don't forget to smash that like button. Smash it like it's possessed by jinns, like Muhammad was possessed by jinn. And also click on the notification bell to receive notifications when we go live, like today. So, let me go back. So this is proof to you that Muhammad owned many slaves, black slaves. Did you catch it? And he sold the seven slaves or traded, in this case, the seven slaves with Safiya. 
because he wanted Sophia for himself. Look at this guy. He always gets the big screen TV. He gets the best women, the most beautiful women. Why? Is this, is this a mafia leader? Or is this a so-called prophet of God? No, this cannot be a prophet of God. Because a prophet of God would not own slaves, let alone sell slaves. Rob rests in peace? Why? I'm still alive, man. You want me there? I know you hate me and you want me to die. Well, yeah, that's, that's the topic of today, guys. That's the true face of Islam. They hate us so much, they want us dead. I know, I know, bro, I know. I feel your pain. I feel your pain. You want to silence us, right? You want to silence us. You know, guys, you, know, you remember that Amin guy that we spanked that other day? I mean, uh, the boyfriend, one of the boyfriends of Mimi Hijab. Remember him? He also sent me a death threat, remember? You know what he said? Later, you know what he said? And uh, same for Ibn Ajuran. You know what he said? Quote, unquote. He said, it was a joke. It was a joke. Uh, are you telling me that Muhammad got jokes? Your prophet got jokes when he sent the letter to the Romans. To the yellow blondies, to the Romans, when he told them, convert or else. Remember when they sent me the message, guys? The death threat. It was a joke. It was a joke? <laughs> it was a joke. The death threat was a joke, guys. Well, I think then your prophet is a joker. According to your logic, I mean, your prophet was a joker. If this is a joke. Rob Christian, and I quote, you have only two months to repent. Well, according to your logic, your prophet was a joker. He was a joke when he sent the letter to the Romans. Eslim fateslim, convert or else. Ibn Ajuran, quote unquote, Rob Christian, you have two months to repent. It's a joke, people. Muhammad was a joker. It's a joke. Muhammad was joking when he sent the letter to the Romans, convert or else. Aslim fataslim. Right? Muslims. It's a joke. Muhammad is a joke. It's a joke. You're finished, Rob Christian. Muhammad is a joke. Right? Uh, I mean, right, Ibn Jura? It was a joke. This is a joke. Right. 